Hello and welcome to the third game already of the night. We are watching Star Ladder, Star Series, Season 10, Europe Division. A round robin group stages of 16 teams in total. And tonight we're here with two teams that, um, that are pretty good. Pretty good indeed. We've got ourselves Team Tinker facing up against a team that is on top of the food chain of Star Ladder right now. The team that hasn't had a single loss yet is Navi. Team Tinker has played only three games so far and have won two out of, uh, or like three out of two actually, they've also won all but have played a bit less games than Navi has. And Navi actually we're gonna see afterwards as well against Cloud9, so they have a tough day today against Tinker and Cloud9. We're gonna see uh, what these two teams have in store for each other, should be a fairly even game. Uh, before we continue, by the way, I am not an official Starletter caster. To go watch the official cast, you go to twitch.tv slash dota starletter underscore en, where BTS is hosting the stream uh, with the Zayori casting together with Chance, I think. Not sure. Um, anyways, I'm your host, your commentator, your analyst, and as a host, I hereby welcome us to the game because we're going into the draft. And as your analyst, we're going to analyze... The draft. Okay, cool. So we have ourselves... Sorry, I'll be normal from now on. Uh, we have ourselves some very... Or fairly, rather, fairly standard uh, picks and bans. So far, uh, first of all, IO ban. I, I, I already spoke about that in the previous match. If you're up against Team Tinker, you want to ban the IO. So, done. Death Prophet. We saw Koikfa's Death Prophet in the previous game that they combined up with the Viper. It's annoying to deal with, it's annoying to fight in. Removed. We have the also the Bat Rider and the Lycan removed from Dire the pool. Team pick. As a first pick, no, not really surprising, but surprising they let the Razor and the Skywrath through. Uh, apparently they wanted one of the two, they get the Skywrath. Uh, with Razor and Faces Void uh, picked up by Navi, together with a Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet making it all the way to, to the, through to the second pick phase. Which is pretty good. Um... As in for the Nature Prophet, because I'm surprised he makes it through so far. And Team Tinker having the Viper and the Skywrath Mage, so we saw that beforehand Ten already. Seconds. We saw that in a previous game, it works. And um, this time, though, I'm expecting Viper to get shut down Navi's a bit more early. But it looks like Team Tinker wants to try to do about the same thing that they did before. I'm curious to see which hero they're going to try to replace the Death Prophet with, though. Uh, previous game, we of course had Centaur, Viper, Skywrath Mage, Death Prophet as well as Sand King. Sand King also removed from the pool. We have Marana and Sand King banned out by Navi. And we have the Ancient Apparition and the Venomancer removed by Team Tinker. Two supports Dire that are pretty Tinker. heavy on the roam and that are also just good in delaying the game. Which is what you want to do if you have a Phasers Void and a Razor. Ember oh, Spirit is there, so perhaps we are going to see a bit of a switch up here. Uh, Koikfa and Sing Sing both play Ember and Viper, so I'm thinking... Uh, we're going to see those two again with EGM offline and maybe Dire some heavy rotations from the supports again. With the Enigma, the last ban, understandable because you don't really need the supports in this game as Team Tinker. You can all three heroes can solo lane. Skyrath Mage is already there as support and so going into the jungle would be a possibility. Team Ten Tinker, they're probably going to ban out uh, a support or jungle hero themselves. Depends on what they're expecting the Nature's Prophet to do. For me, I'm expecting a Phonic Nature's Prophet. I'm expecting... Uh, have host time. on the... Um, I say Phonic Nature's Prophet, but we have seen Phonic Faces Void as well. So it could be that one as well. But I'm s expecting have host actually on the Razor. Uh, not the Razor, I mean the Void. And then uh, Dendi on the Razor. And then F and G on the hero that is left to be picked up. And Five Vanscore seconds, on the Vengeful Spirit, me. as he has played Vengeful Spirit a lot. Depending on what no, is last, because if it's a Dazzle, they might pick. switch that about. Disruptor, last ban out for Team Tinker, who indeed ban out a support. Let's see if uh, if they and... I, if I and they, does that actually work in English? I think so. Let's see if we're right. Uh, if they are indeed willing to pick up a support, wanting to pick up a support. One thing that I want to point out before I rabble on about all kinds of nothingness. Team Tinker has used every second Ten of their bonus time, remaining. apart from four. While Navi have not used a single second, second of their remaining. bonus time. They knew what they wanted. They knew what Team Tinker probably wanted. And they have Reserve acted time. accordingly and only now... Are they going to go for it? And indeed, as Chet points out, Shadow Shaman, still in the pool, actually would be a very nice hero for Team Tinker if they want to have some heavy push again, like they did in the previous game. Works very well with the Viper, works very well with the Skywrath as well, if you want to just dump a Mystic Flare on someone's head. And there comes a Bane for Navi, Dire so that is going to be pick. the support that they end up going for. I 
Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Bane, to be honest. I mean, it's great for against the Ember Spirit, and I did need some extra lockdown, perhaps, for him. But it's not really... Can, it, apart from solo lockdown, I'm not, like, I'm, yeah. Can't say a lot of good things about a Bane. It's a, it's a good hero, though, but it's just Ten personal flavor, I guess, remaining. for my part. Uh, let's see, see what Team Tinker goes for here as the last pick. Five as uh, Skywrath Mage. Can combine up, be combined up with Earthshaker, who's still in the pool. Reserve time. Um, let's see, Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman. Yeah, that we that was the one that we we uh, we saw, indeed. So uh, Shadow Shaman. Chat pointed it out. I pointed it out, and they actually went for it. Good guy, Chat. Chat should be official co-caster for this one. Uh, well, let's take a look at how these two teams uh, will lane, as they do have quite a bit of options. And. Uh, I saw the sub hype. I did turn off the sound. I'll play the sound for you afterwards. <laughs> Thank you, though. Um, yeah. So <laughs> let's take a look at how we're gonna lane things. FNG and Vanscore. I actually thought they were gonna switch things around. I personally like Vengeful Spirit on Vanscore a bit more. Um, also personal preference. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's a personal favorite cast. That's how it is. Ten seconds. Also, on that in. note, um. What actually is uh, is is fun Five to do. So if you're remaining. if you're watching and you're planning on learning a hero better, and you have got a Dota two TV ticket for a specific or for a tournament like this, then you find a game where your favorite or the hero that you want to play is played by a person that you that that you know is a good player, and you watch that game in player perspective. And you see what that player does. That's something I did with. Uh, Vengeful scores Vengeful Spirit, but now he's not playing it. So that's that's why I was expecting it. Anyways, um, let's take a look at who's playing what. Uh, apart from we we shouldn't be having too many surprises. Uh, Dendi on Razor already predicted that one. That's a weird helmet. He hasn't destroyed any buildings yet, guys. This doesn't offer a lot of confidence. Uh, we have got Vost playing the Faces Void, Vanscore playing the Bane then, and FNG on the Vengeful Spirit. And that will indeed leave Phonic to play his Nature's Prophet as expected. So uh, not a lot of surprises on this side, apart from maybe the swap between Vanscore and FNG. Uh, we're going to look at Team Tinker, who have Sing Sing playing the Amber Spirit and Koi on the Viper. So uh, compared to previous games, slightly different. EGM once again on the Centaur. Pycat playing the Skywrath Mage this time instead of Bulba, and Bulba therefore playing the Shadow Shaman. So... A bit of a uh, couple of swap arounds for these uh, these teams, but still solid lineups from both parts. Uh, different plans for both parts. So we've got ourselves a team that has got push potential, uh, mid game, a lot of mid game aggression and uh, fighting potential, and uh, late game insurance policy in the form of an Ember Spirit. Uh, at the other side, we've got ourselves two late game insur insurance policies with the Razor as well as the Phases Void. Phases Void a bit more so. We've got two supports that will probably try to roam a lot um, because with Vengeful Spirit you just want to want to roam a lot. He also he also picked up a smoke. Uh, there is of course roaming potential as well with the Shadow Shaman and the, the Vengeful or Shadow Shaman and the Skywrath Mage, but it's uh, it requires they they need to be level two and three to be that. To Vengeful Spirit can already do that uh, very effectively at level one. And uh, in terms of mid game aggression for Navi, who also have by the way their Nature's oh. Prophet as late game insurance. But in terms of mid game aggression, it's a bit less than Team Tinker has. But they are definitely able to deal with uh, pushes or initiations coming from Team Tinker. You've got a Chronosphere that can either help you back off and run away. You've got yourself the Razor that you the can static link begins. someone. And if you can, if your enemy team continues to go on you, you actually start to build quite a lot of damage. And you can actually turn around and fight them. And you've got Nightmares and Stuns to come out. Tower so it, I think that Navi will be able to not get run over like Team Tinker did in the previous game. They still have to be careful not to give too much away, though, as we do have a rotation into the jungle. Pycat's going to be the first target that they find. They're actually going to land a stun. There's a double damage rune on Vanscore, who actually picks up a nightmare, looks for the vision, will find it as well to get better in range. Never mind. Won't find it anymore. And Skywrath is gone. As uh, Dendi already drained some mana from Koik for this, this lane, though. Like... <sighs> Everybody that plays mid, these are your worst nightmares. Viper is one of those heroes that just wins lanes. Um, 
Razor is one of the heroes that just wins mid, so it's gonna be uh, interesting to see who does what. As Sing Sing is actually already out of his shield and might actually be first blood here. I think he is. Tries to go for a sh for a yeah, for a snare. Can't get advanced scores. Right click will will deal enough damage to take him down. First blood on the board. Aggressive try line with a Vos van score and FNG here by the looks of things, leaving Funic by himself on his bottom lane. Uh, he is gonna be in some trouble soon, perhaps as Pycat's here with a, with a smoke. I'm not sure how much they can actually do, and Funic does have a teleport. There is a silence as well as a disable, so perhaps enough. EGM is very low though, so this is risky to do. But they might try anyways. Uh, we're gonna see it. The smoke goes off. Doesn't matter because Funic does not see him. Oh, hello! <laughs> yep, yeah, welcome to the lane. I think he saw him. I think he should have seen him. In the meantime, we've got FNG rotating from top to middle. It's not like ganking a viper. I'm not sure if that is something that you wish to be doing. As Funic just sees a Pycat walk by, knowing that he can't <laughs> do anything there. Nice deny there. And in terms of uh, where we're gonna see kills happen, I actually wouldn't be surprised if one of these two kills the other, purely because both should be winning, like our lane winners. And lane winners are just sometimes a bit cocky because they're so confident in the hero potential that they forget that they could actually get outplayed a bit. So this is um, this is an interesting combination here. Indeed fans, that is the wrong information that you've got there by the way. Rotation coming out from Pycat with a haste rune. He's still not spec anything. Doesn't really know what he wants to go for yet. Set of Link is there. Let's see. The sound is actually really different. Do they have enough damage? Uh, tower. Hello. Vanscore. Rather. FNG coming from the side. Able to take a kill. Vanscore from the side. Nightmare up on that uh, Viper. And this should be <laughs> an easy kill. And uh, Razor takes it. He stole 98 damage from that uh, Viper. So two kills. Two extra kills going away of Na'Vi. And uh, they, they therefore annihilate the threat that was the Skywrath Mage, who was forced to go for a concussive shot because you can't really dive too far under the tower. You want to slow your enemy down. But in the end, they needed that extra damage. Couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. Funic like rotating back bottom. I guess his excursion to the middle lane did give EGM some time to farm up. Who wants to, of course, have uh, his Tranquil Boots and a Blink Dagger as well. Seeing if you can make something happen then with that. For the moment though. Why is this right click looks like it comes from some other place? <laughs> Weird. Uh, for the moment it's uh it's it's nothing he can what do. It just I? has to do what he does best, trying to last it as much as possible, trying to get his items up as fast as possible. And not get denied as much. Advanced going back to the top lane, got boots. Um Vos still farming away. What can we say about that, right? Oh, hello! That should not have happened, Funic. That's a that's that's something that you cannot allow to happen. He didn't even use his ulti for it. Gets level six off the back of it. That was a mistake from Funic, from letting that centaur get so close. And Nature's Prophet did have boots, so it's boots versus boots, and you shouldn't be standing in range of a of a stump a stump then. So, bit of a misplay there. But the first skill for Team Tinker definitely a needed one, and also on a good hero because that is of course a hero that is gonna make a big difference later on in the game. And uh, I, he I hereby see that if I play Razor, I should try to change up my build, going for Max Static Link. Stole 63 damage. Quickfoot doesn't even have that much. How can he steal it if it's not there? Pool going on. It's nighttime though, they don't see each other. And FNG only now going, uh, they're not even. I feel like, can they perhaps dive? They don't have a Chrono just yet. Uh, stampede going on to get away. Turned uh, pretty low from Funix harassment and the harassment from the Treants. FNG and Vance were rotating middle instead. It's Viper that they want. I think it's Viper that they can get as well. It's very little that they can do. Teleport coming in though. This is gonna be Bulba coming in on his Skyrath Pycat rather. Boifa <laughs> still uh, will drop, but at least they get the Vengeful Spirit in return. Perhaps Pycat is in some, yep, Pycat's in some trouble too. Dendi did steal 84 damage again. Sorry for calling him Bulba, but that's because Bulba played the Skyrath in the previous game. Got confused there for a second. Good kills, uh, worth it for Navi for sure, as Dendi just can continue farming and that Viper dead again. 
And then the, I'm curious if he's going to be uh, going for mechanism this game. Treads first. Or if he's going to let someone else uh, go for the mechanism. Chronosphere, first one on top lane. Get bashed, son. Down he goes. Vengeful Spirit actually takes the last hit just to make sure that then he could not get away. He's no still level 5 though, so he couldn't have gotten away. They will turn this kill into a tower push with very little that Dyer's Team Tinker can actually do about this. In the meantime, in the mid lane, Koikfa is trying to do what he can as well. He is kind of poor though. He's only got 13 last hits. Haste. Up against 22 of Dendis, who, Dyer's by the way, has 22 denies. And the reason for that is purely because... Rather, yeah, purely because of that damage Dyer's leech. Top tower you can't last fallen. it if you don't have any damage. It's, it's just that simple. Stampede being used. They actually turn around. Go for Dendi here. They already broke the static link. This could be their chance. Is it enough? They don't have enough nuke. Dendi is too tanky with those, tre those treads. And the Nightmare coming off as well. Setting Bulba stock. Brain Sap is there. And enough damage to take him down is there oh as well. Bane will take the shadow. kill. And another kill goal in the way of Navi. Radiant's it is seven to two, is and attack. Navi is in a dominating force right here. This is, this is just control. They have got control over every lane. Top lane is theirs. Uh, Vost is free farming basically. I, I say free farming. Steve he's not as face. high on the as he should be if he's free farming. Whoa, Ooh, Bane got just nuked down hard. <laughs> I guess that was a double edge level four. I got slowed down. Sorry guys, I missed that one. I just saw his I just saw his health bar on the top. <laughs> just dropped like within a second. It was scary. Poor Bane. Poor Van Square. But yeah, but the voice is not as, as high as he would be if he was free farming, but he is highest on top of the last hits. And he's just doing really well. Uh Centaur is, is second, so this is really important for Team Tinker. They need to get that blink dagger up and then then get that ball rolling to go for their side. Get help on the Viper. Like the reason Viper is picked and the reason Viper is actually um uh, Never really a bad pick. Oh, wait a second. Stump comes off. Funic it doesn't have a sprout. Does have an ultimate. Does Vost have a chrono? He does. He has three stick charges. It's enough to get one off. And that's going to be EGM. Stuck and uh, gone. One more hit and it will be Funic that takes the kill. And with that kill, for the second time, they can transfer a kill into a tower push. In the meantime, Bulba runs away from this middle lane while the rest of Navi is... Uh, well, basically... Being a menace in mid lane. This is so difficult for Koikfa to actually get some farm. Uh, so the point that I was making was that a Viper is a good hero because in general Dyer's he wins his lane and is, it's just he turns into a tanky Dyer's hero that is difficult to, to is take down. Attack. But if he doesn't win his lane, he can't do everything that he's known for. He can't get a fast mechanism up if he doesn't win his lane. He can't, he can't turn into a tanky hero. He can't really gank. Because he doesn't have room control. Stampede going off. EGM looking for a target. They find Funic. Should be able to get him. Hexing up. Shackling him down. In the meantime though. Viper came around to try and help. But ends up going down to the threesome of Navi. That was still on that side of the map. They slow down FNG. Can they take him down? Silence up on Dendi. But the Fiend's Grip comes out. And it's Sing Sing that goes down. In comes the Vos again. Jumps on Bulba. Gets the kill as well. It's still only Funic that went down. And EGM now trying to run away as well. There is no slow for him anymore. So... He will be able to make it out alive and also, by the way, Pike had managed to get away on the skin of his teeth. But three for one and again another tower on the back of that. It is Dyer's four kills for fallen. Team Tinker so far against the 11 of Navi. But that is not the most dangerous part in this case. No, the dangerous part is that Team Tinker is losing towers and they're losing them way too fast. It is, you know, normally I don't change my, uh, my uh, last hits in the nice. Until 10 minutes into the game. But with all these rotations, and with Navi being all over the place, and with all that extra tower gold being stacked upon those last hits and the nice, because we, we see Sing Sing pr being pretty high up there in the last hits, it's great. But by this time, he's died three times, he's 0 3 0, and the, all the towers that are added up to Navi's gold difference brings the net worth to this. Look at how scary that looks. This is. It's it's not over, don't get me wrong. But this is definitely Team Tinker in a very tough position. And it's only 10 minutes into the game. And what heroes do they have to fall back on? I already said at the at the start of this game what the, what the teams were strong at. So Team Tinker, I, I mentioned more as a mid-game oriented lineup with uh, the late game insurance being the Ember Spirit. Well, Ember Spirit, Ember Spirit doesn't have any items yet. His net worth is lower than that of the support Bane. 
So, good luck with that. Next to that, um, wait a second, my mouse just stopped working. It's a problem. Soon it will be turned on again, don't worry guys. <laughs> and I'm getting a new mouse on Wednesday, I believe so. <laughs> okay, mouse is back. Great professional cast. Hashtag production value. But yeah, so so Team Tinker is a mid-game oriented lineup. And they do have heroes that are pretty okay at delaying the game with Shadow Shaman wards and stuff. But you don't want to use the wards to delay the game. No, you want to use the wards because you got a kill. You can take down the tower with them. With the wards. That's why you want to have those wards up from the Shadow Shaman. They, I mean, they have now Blink, Dagger, and Centaur. But what are they delaying the game for? Because I mentioned Na'Vi in terms of lineups. tower is under attack. Their late game potential. So scary. You've got a razor. You've got to face this void. Dyer's the nightmare of every pub player. Radiant's top tower is under attack. You got yourself Dyer's Nature's Prophet. Split push. Even though Funic is not really known for being a split push Nature's Prophet, he's more known as a battle Nature's Prophet. Ooh, Vance squares some trouble, but Stampede to fallen. get away. Oh, can't get it. Swap from FNG. And dead you are. In comes Sing Sing, trying to make something happen. Funic is going to be his target. He will be able to pick him up, but he is sucked. In a Fiend's grip. Anybody remember this scene from bottom lane? Exact, almost exact same thing happened. It was Funic that died again there as well. But again, Sing Sing caught out in the Fiend's grip. And again, dying. They attack. need to have that silence for the Fiend's grip. But at the same time, if Skyrath Mage would have gotten the range there, he would have died as well. And then they're already going high ground. Might not have gone for a mechanism. But does this team really need a mechanism? Oh, Vengeful Spirit is going for it. Normally, you'd go for a mechanism if you're uh, taking damage. And so far, they're not taking that much damage. FNG does have uh, almost got the mechanism complete, by the way. That's a support player having mechanism at 13 minutes is really, really respectable, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a scary looking game. Team Tinker, they have to hope that Na'Vi makes Dyer's some big mistakes here. Oh, jumps in. Let's see, getting stunned straight away. Nice, Hoof Stomp gets two with that. But a Chronosphere to make sure that nobody can do anything in the back of Vos takes down two while EGM is trying to run away from the onslaught of Dendi. It is uh, FNG that still dies from the wards. Triple kill for a Vos though. EGM and... Well, actually EGM is the only one that lives through it all. Sing Sing bought back for this and is gonna die for the second time. That is four dead still. Five in total. And only one Vengeful Spirit died because she stood too long under the Serpent wards. That is a fight that Team Tinker is gonna cost. They are gonna be losing their racks off the back of it by the looks of things. Uh, do they have enough pushing power? I think they do. They're just waiting for the creep wave. Um, actually, because it's so early on in the game, look at that. Everybody apart from Sing Sing is already back up again. And it might not be enough time to go for the... Uh, for the racks. <laughs> yeah. We're only 13 minutes into the game, guys. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. GG, never mind. <laughs> game over. They they knew it too. Team Tinker. Uh, this is their first loss in Starletter. They had three games before this one, all victorious. Uh, this also means that Navi is still unbeaten in Starletter. They have their score at 6-0. And now 7-0. And they have a chance to turn it into 8-0 because they're going to play their eighth game against Cloud9. Who has actually already played three games, uh, but have only won one of those. So we're going to see Cloud9 take on Na'Vi in our next game. Stick around. Uh, official starting time for the game. I'm sorry. I hope they're going to start it earlier. <laughs> but, you know, normally they schedule about an hour for this game. An hour and 15 minutes, actually, to be exact. This game only lasted 14 minutes. Count with that a 10-minute um, draft time-ish. We're going to have our next game in 45 minutes. And this was actually the game I was looking forward to most. Oh well. Game was hard, guys. GG Navi. We're going to go to the next game soon. So uh, thank you for watching here. If you have any feedback, this is the time to give it because... This is actually solo cast to get better and stuff. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Probably best to not let me know in chat though, because chat goes pretty fast and I can't read everything. But you can send a message over my website or via Twitch. Thanks. We'll be right back.